<laughs> Two words. <laughs> Dominic Lehmann is an artist, a teacher, um, and a reference in contemporary, uh, let's call it contemporary art. I call it actual art, art that is really happening. I don't like the label contemporary here or there. It's happening. And he works, if I may say so, a lot or exclusive around the concept of image. Uh, but turning that image as a sort of pharmacon in the reality that surrounds us. So to, to watch or be present in a work by Dominic Lehmann is to be uh, traverse. It's a work that traverses space. So who is there is a witness of that traversing. He, he usually uses the, the words um, uh, cinema with the lights on. So it's it's not cinema anymore. It's reality that it's um, not even questioned. is is made transparent through the projections. Usually projections. These projections are usually they tend to be loops. They tend to be short. They tend to be black and white or low. So it's a, a an, it's an image of the anti spectacle anti spectacle in my opinion. So it's really the. Yeah, it's an important pharmacon in contemporary mindset. And uh, just to tell you that one of his works, uh, we've already worked since 2010 or 11, something like that. And uh, uh, one of his works, I mean, definitely changed my life. And it's quite one of the reasons why we are here. It's called 60 Seconds Cathedral. It involves um, 34 or something like that, parachuters. 32. You, you will see 32. it. You will see yeah, it. Okay. I, I have it so, in my presentation. <laughs> good. So it's the work that, that really shows a sort of sacredness, or if you want, the sacred in a very particular way. And we, I must be now very fast. I just want to tell you that Dominic Lehmann is presenting 10 new works in Venice this um, next 23rd April. We are doing a project called Madnicity. Uh, which is about madness, magic, uh, and dreams, and and the war. So quite, quite relevant or irrelevant. Um, so and and you teach in Poznan and live between Poznan and Berlin, and you also work in Berlin. So I think we move on to the. Um, yeah, that's my current situation. Yes, we move I, on. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't plan that. It just happened. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Abril should say just two words quick also about what is our major post, because I'm not the intellectual here. I'm more like a, a, a follower of Abril here who we decided to discuss this and we came up with this concept of sphere. Okay. What is yeah. this sphere and not sphere? Uh, the, uh, the, the sphere uh, is um, uh, an icon for, for creation. Um, it, it's uh, it, it's uh, uh, an archetype, uh, if you want, of uh, uh, of the the role that art may have uh, in in uh, enhancing the 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 value and and the importance of the creative act. And uh, the sphere uh, uh, wants to 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 put it in a very perfect and and uh, uh, and essential way uh, because the the sphere it's uh, it's a point but 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 it's the infinity uh, as well. Well, uh, the, the idea is is very simple. We want to to bring the 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 sacredness of uh, the art, artistic creation to the public. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good for me for the moment. Okay. <laughs> so, so welcome. Uh, is this my time? Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Uh, I'm very happy to 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 be here with you. And uh, uh, as Mario just mentioned, he's like the, the not as intellectual as, as Jose. I mean, I would say I'm the, the least intellectual here because uh, uh, my talk would be would be based on a, on a general practical um, level. Uh, but I think it's interesting to share with you um, the way how I approach the image. And I approach the inspiration basically from the from the, um, the position of uh, purgation, meaning in a very simple way that 
I, I think every every inspiration, every image we collect, uh, we grab, uh, deserves some time to put it put it uh, b b simply to digest, as as many people say, um, or to um, wait. So uh, I would say that this is a this is this this liminal moment of of the delay that really um, seems to be very important for me as an artist at the moment when everything uh, is really doomed to, to to be current. The currency, the actuality, seem to grab uh, the, the uh, areas that were never earlier even uh, thought of to be possessed by the idea of of actuality. And I think I, from this moment, I'll just start my presentation. So I share the screen. OK. OK, and the view is the slideshow. OK, so uh, is it visible now for everybody? I yes. Think so. Yes. The, oh, so Part of part of the way how I deal with my paintings, because I, I uh, predominantly uh, perceive myself as a painter and I'll tell maybe later on how, uh, what, what is the origin of, of that, that sort of perception of my of my um, artistic entity is really uh, declaring the creative act as an act of resistance. Uh, so um, hence the, the, the quote from Friedrich Kiesler, the art is the teaching of resistance. Because the, the resistance is always, uh, I would say, something which is very strongly inclined with the process, not of making, but of in fact unmaking or um, waiting until um, the particular time or the moment will come. So. Uh, to put things short, I would like to start from a few quotes that I think are very close to my vision of what I do and also the experience uh, and a very practical experience that I could that I would like to share with uh, with um, with all of you. So the first sentence is, is, is by Michelangelo Antonioni from the Architecture of Vision. You cannot penetrate events by reportage. And art is something else than the reportage. I would say it's closer to deportage rather than a reportage. The second sentence is that art has no meaning for those for whom uh, life is only a spectacle. That's from John Berger from the painter of our time. And exactly, I would say that uh, the people who are uh, uh, really concentrated on the, on the aspect of, uh, of uh, being a pure perceivers of um, here and now, uh, really, uh, um, they do not need to, to use that um, tool, which I would say is a part of, for, for part of the tool, not necessarily for an artist, but also for the spectator. Uh, and the third quote is from Deleuze, uh, and, and this is, I think, also very, very true. What we lack at the moment, in fact, is the lack of a resistance to the present. Because when I, when I create, um, uh, I would really uh, like to think that things that are coming to life are being somehow noticed. They are noticed some subconsciously without really knowing uh, how do they fit, where do they fit, and what am I going to do with them? It's a collection, a collection of things, a collection of, 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 of uh, impressions, and I think something which we can sometimes do against them is to try to make them actual, to try to instantly uh, interview the, them, incline them into the, into the creative process. So the aspect of the delay for me uh, is is really essential. The, the moment of making or the artistic gesture even, and the moment of um, uh, uh, conceiving the work, uh, it, it's not necessarily the same one. As I would say that that the, that uh, the misunderstanding of that position. Is is one of the most uh, um, uh, most visible qualities of the graphomaniac. The graphomaniac does not recognize the moment between 
gathering the image, gathering the inspiration, and actually coming out with uh, with uh, coming up with something which, in fact, will find its own time and a place in a particular moment in a particular space. So, as being a painter, the spatial aspect, uh, uh, but also the the the, the time based aspect, is is uh, is a priority for me. And to start from the the uh, movie, uh, which will allow you maybe to uh, submerge my, yourself into into my activity, I would like to first of all show the exhibition, which is called "Air Wants to Go," which is the part of my cooperation with the American poet Howard Altman, and it happened in uh, in uh, Wrocław in the uh, Oppenheim. And I would just like to, to just leave you with watching the short movie about uh, the work, which maybe allow you to familiarize with, with the specific type of work, which I'm uh, very much attached to at the moment. One of the works, one of the works on the exhibition uh, is called Not Entitled. Uh, the specific formula of my work based on the, on the tradition of the Baroque painting is, is um, conceived by the recording of my wife. It's been recorded around six years now ago. Um, and uh, what I can say, you, you make things, you, you create things, you do things, but you're not really aware of contextualizing the work um, by itself. I think this is, this is something which I, I would like to share with you also because of my feeling that the works um, are not necessarily works which can be fully opera uh, operational, uh, at the moment when uh, in the moment of creation we really know um, what will be the the context of the work uh, within the next few years and i think this is the first work which i uh, would like to present that definitely relates to that problem between work in itself which is an artistic gesture uh, making it because of the, the purely formal reasons uh, the idea of a marionette, the idea of a pregnant woman, the the uh, the, the prayer, all those things that happen to be very directly contextualized by the uh, current situation in Poland with the uh, anti-abortion laws. Uh, suddenly the work which uh, happened to be uh, conceived for completely different reasons has its own right to speak up about the actuality, although the actuality has not been pressed or, or in, any, in, in any case somehow inclined within the work at the moment of um, uh, the actual making. Uh, 
it's enough to wait uh, to see uh, how the work will find its own way to the world, how the work will find its own uh, response. Uh, um, and I would say um, the work, it's much more effective when we do not necessarily plan it uh, for the uh, present response in terms of its, its current issues. Uh, this work wasn't like that as much as many other works, which is a surprise for me. And the surprise for me is how uh, much I suddenly feel that, of course, if I would have planned that work as a sort of a literal uh, reflection or uh, somehow response towards the actual situation in Poland, it wouldn't probably be as successful. And I wouldn't even formally, if it would be similar, I wouldn't really find it successful because then I would find it too literal. So uh, the element of a resistance for me in the work is also being able with the with the all um, desire because we all have the desire. It's like uh, desire to reflect upon political situation, social situation. We live in a certain uh, environment which, of course, has its own pressure on us. But uh, I would say that that pressure uh, has to be uh, somehow resisted by an artist. Otherwise, he sort of gets into the other ground, which uh, very often is being confused with the, what my perception of painting is, um, uh, which is illustration. Uh, those works, I think, are not illustrative in the way um, that they may be perceived that as a certain type of illustrations. But from the artist's point of view, they are not illustrative at all because they were not made or meant to be an illustration. And for that reason, I would say the moment between make between making and the actual perceiving work in the gallery or in the, in the, in the public space is is uh, is is really essential. So as happened with the with this uh, work, which is the work called the Harnessed Swimmer which was shown in 2018 in, uh, in the exhibition Sanguine about the this was show about Baroque curated by Luc Toymans. Uh, and the painting is called The Harnessed Swimmer. And it, it's been waiting for this moment to actually find its place in the neighborhood of Caravaggio. Although, in fact, uh, what you look at is the recording of the uh, father of my uh, former girlfriend who used to have a a swimming pool in his cellar, uh, two meters by two, and he used to harness himself to the one side to be able to swim in place. Uh, that's it really uh, for my inspiration. I just thought that he looks like uh, very much like the figure from the Ribera paintings. So I made that sort of um, painting, which is serves the purpose of being a screen architecture for, for this uh, projection. Although, uh, when making it or recording these few seconds, which are um, uh, constantly uh, looped, uh, I would not have any idea that uh, the, the actual place uh, finally would be uh, in the neighborhood of, of the Caravaggio's David and Goliath. <laughs> but it's found its way. So. The reason, the, the, the difference, uh, this is David Hammonds, one of my uh, favorite artists. Uh, just using him because, of course, those, snow, those snowballs will melt eventually. <laughs> and uh, I think this also illustrates this, this, uh, this um, question of uh, exposition or offer in a kind of ironical way. Uh, the process of making and, and the process of delivering uh, over something which, in fact, is completely out of the sub substance or out of any kind of offering when you do not uh, think of it how to design something which is equally sellable. So it's not only for me uh, the, the huge joke about the art market or about uh, the idea of an artist uh, who is the protagonist of the objects uh, in front of the objects that he makes but it's also a representation of a of a certain um, absurdity of time that we try to find a, uh, an image or a, an offer or a, or a proposition for the viewer 
uh, at a certain time and a certain place. And I think that kind of absurdity which he presents is a perfectly uh, good illustration for my idea of what I have to offer and in what time I'm, I'm uh, somehow have the, um, uh, the the courage to break the to, to cross the bridge between the idea or the actual making and the the display. So as another another uh, favorite artist, I mean, as you noticed, John Baldessari pretending to smoke his cigar to uh, mimic the shape of a cloud. Uh, I think this is also a beautiful metaphor of, uh, of my uh, idea uh, of the projection and the kind of mimet mimeticism of the projection uh, in, uh, with regards to the real image. So just to say that most of my projected uh, paintings, in fact, they, are, they do not represent so as the cloud uh, from the cigar, uh, they do not re uh, in Baldessari, they do not represent the actual figure or performer, but they do represent the projection of the performer. So they are personification. They are, they are, they are personifications of the projections of the ghosts. One of the curators from uh, from uh, South Africa, South America, uh, told me once that I, I do ghost paintings and I think this is a very close and very true about what I do. So I paint ghosts rather than I paint the real figures. All those I, I use the I use the uh, the mean of the projection to represent those ghosts and represents the certain type of time because again uh, going to on Kavara for me this is a this is a question between exactly the moment when the work is being conceived and the work in the moment and the kind of statement which may be completely different statement and the moment when the show is when the work is being uh, uh, exhibited which is the way of saying uh, i'm still alive <laughs> And most of all, the way of saying how to not to make a, this is Baldessari, how to make the, the, not to make a boring art. And I think the, the, the boring art becomes at the moment when at the moment when I make something in my studio, I know exactly how this is going to end and what sort of a production I'm being involved with. And then we're not doing art, we're just doing design. And the, from the point of the design, it may still not be boring, but from the uh, point of the art, I would say it's already boring. So how to avoid boring art? Uh, basically, uh, I would say to avoid it by the way how we perceive the creative act, by uh, the way how we use our gesture to surprise ourselves, not to fulfill our our preemptive uh, uh, expectations. Although that could have been boring uh, in terms of Opauka work from the uh, the creative act, uh, incredibly boring from the creative act of the of the uh, of the spectator. But I would say from the artist's point of view, uh, it, it could have been still surprising. The effect, as much as life, as breathing, as every breath uh, we make, uh, uh, can be surprising as long as we are uh, able to use our creativity to make this breath interesting, although it's repetitive, although it's a loop. So we go into this moment of a purgation. And uh, purgatory is, uh, of, of course, is this abstract uh, place, but in fact, in the current times that are completely uh, time driven with the now and uh, here, um, this happens to be a real place and it happens to be uh, the, the real time. And uh, I think this is a very true uh, in terms of the way how I perceive those drawings of Botticelli um, uh, representing divine uh, comedy by Dante when all these um, is, uh, all these precisely uh, drawn figures that are being uh, drawn and erased again and drawn again and erased again so pur purgatory for me is also uh, also the uh, the process of erasure 
we are erasing ourselves to be able to come up with a new surprise. And those surprises then can then then they can uh, um, they can uh, contextualize themselves in a very unexpected and somehow dangerous way uh, for the artists. So we have to watch out. Uh, those prophetic drawings by Mark Lombardi, they always stunt me also by the way that artist has disappeared in a quite mysterious way after making them. And uh, this was made by, by, by far before, far before the um, uh, World, uh, World, uh, World, World Trade Center. But it seemed like that they contextualize themselves in such a strong way that, in fact, it's, it's, it, 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 they affect it within a very sudden death of the author, as if sometimes we can step on the mystery, which may not even really expect just playing with meanings, just playing with the actuality. But uh, for some uh, that I would laterly call um, um, algelast, which is this, this term from Rabelais, used by Kundera, uh, which describes the people who are not able to understand uh, uh, a certain type of irony, which not necessarily is the only truth. It's, it's a kind of a possibility. But uh, people very often expect the, uh, from the artist to be definite, to be uh, precise. Uh, which I would say it's it's not the right deal. It's not the deal that that is um, um, that we should really somehow acknowledge. Uh, that's not the deal when you when we we look at the Eve Klein uh, leap into the void. Uh, when we are <coughs> rewinding and rewinding, rewinding the same moment, which will eventually. Uh, provide us that option for the future, but uh, this future is a sort of a projection uh, affected by the artistic gesture of the of the uh, of the uh, artist who does not describe the future. He contextualizes the future. The future will contextualize his art sooner or later. But what he does, he just initiates the process like a domino, uh, which will end up eventually. Uh, if the work of art is successful in in the right moment and the right time when the work will contextualize themselves be completely behind the will of an artist uh, outside of his will outside of, of his intentions so as i would say this piece which mario already mentioned this is a 60 second cathedral Probably the highest cathedral ever made is, is being created over the 5,000 meters high by 32 skydivers for 60 seconds.
wyszło na swoim zawiałku. Można się, się wyśnić nie wyszedł, bo jeżeli się po jednym powiesi na, na, na tym nogach, to, to, to będzie masakra, bo przede wszystkim rozciągnie tą bazę, żeby się straszne naprężenia i tam się wszystko, wszystko rozpierdzieli. Mamy kupę czasu, bo będzie, 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 będzie wyżej, dużo wyżej niż, 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 niż normalne skoki, więc nie chciałbym, żebyśmy się spieszyli. 6, Nie, 12 będzie. Z tysięcy stówek! He says, he says he, it's a plenty of time, it's, we have 60 
And this is this is the actual effect which was shown in Tallinn, the part of the festival. Mar Maria was a, was a curator. So we're going back to the idea of a gesture. What is the actual gesture and what is the result? I've shown a little bit longer version uh, of, of this documentation of a cathedral. But I, uh, I didn't know it's such a long one, but uh, Anyway, uh, what I'm trying to say now and what's my my point really is um, that uh, during making the cathedral, in fact, uh, I was uh, put into this situation, I think, which was the, the, the most uh, important for me as an artist, uh, that at the certain point I wasn't able to define, in fact, what it is. And when you're not able to use any kind of critical tools to reinterpret your work, then it means that um, you're successful. Uh, and I think I think this is also the, the question how the work contextualizes itself later. For example, I wasn't really aware with the cathedral that uh, recreating those side walls, uh, vaults of the of the ceiling of the church. Uh, suddenly, the group of uh, skydivers, as you were able to see, started to remind the shape of a chromosome. Uh, 
so those elements that are somehow escaping from our initial idea, I think they are the most precious ones. As, as much as what is happening with the work, which in fact wasn't anything else than just a simple gesture, which you have just seen of uh, me uh, unrolling the, the, the roll of fence on the floor uh, of my studio, uh, which is a part of uh, the environment where, where, where I experiment, where I do so, all sorts of um, things. And um, then um, it happened to be charged with meaning, but this meaning is not the meaning which comes out from the directly from the from the actual uh, studio. It comes out from the time which needs to be spent between the, the, the gesture and the actual uh, uh, results. So here the here's a work which I think it's one of the most important works well, for me in the recent time. The gesture of an artist unrolling the fence in his studio. So uh, as most of my ideas, uh, they originate within the, the studio practice. But the difference is what, what's happening in the studio and then what's come up uh, on the show. So that's the story of, of, uh, of what, which actually is an untranslatable word. Uh, we, we decided to, uh, to not to translate it with the curator, Marek Bartelik, uh, with whom I proposed the work for the, for the National Pavilion for, for the Venice Biennale last year. Well, the exhibition which which uh, took place, and I'm very, I feel very fortunate about the the whole situation. I think this is a very, this was a very good show last year, uh, which we've created with Marek Vasilevsky. Um, uh, was the actual uh, presentation of the full scale project proposed for the Venice Biennale? The Venice Biennale project, which we which we applied for with Marek Bartelik, who is a New York-based curator, uh, was rejected. But uh, I would have said that that uh, the actual rejection is a part of work. In fact, uh, I don't know if if the work uh, with such a such a quality of uh, of uh, and subtlety uh, can be rejected for the formal reasons, but for some reasons it was rejected. So, in fact, it adds, I would say, the rejection adds a bit to the whole project and, and it really works not as a work as such, but also as a work which is a rejected project. Uh, and in, in that way it was presented in, in Arsenal Gallery last year. Well, it's, it's probably one of the most important works I have I've done so far. Uh, it's it's uh, it, it, it deals with the same structure uh, from the formal uh, side as, as most of the work, which means most most of my work, which means the dealing with the with the uh, projection that also is not a question of, of just a mean or transportation of uh, of the, the image, but also it's um, it's the problem in itself. And I think this is this is really the story of, of plot, that uh, it is a projection, it is a work which is being projected in a gallery space, covering the walls within a uh, constant loop until uh, the space becomes white. But also it's a question of our projection in terms of all problems that uh, are uh, related to the idea of plot which can be, for example, the xenophobia, the fear of the other, all the, those problems that in fact begin or originate as a projection in our heads. And well, it, 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 it of course can apply uh, to all sorts of uh, current issues uh, that, uh, that uh, happen to be very much present within, within our uh, local environment as well as, as a global one. But what can I say is that, that my, uh, my uh, will or enthusiasm to show this work and to present it was not that the work was made as a result of the situation, but in fact the situation added 
to what's been already there because the work originates from uh, 2014 when I made the actual gesture in the studio. So what's interesting also in, in, in terms of the relation between the politics or the, the social uh, the problematics and all those issues that we somehow uh, relate to when we when we inside of installation or we can relate to is that they came second. But still, I would have said it's quite a challenge that as uh, though they came as a second, still the work is not an illustration of a problem. It's a piece of art in itself, and I think more universal than just uh, illustrative towards the, the, the situation that we're dealing with now. Although I think the currency or the sudden currency which appeared in context between this work and the and the, the situation that we deal with made me feel like that I really would like to propose it for especially a national pavilion uh, at the Venice Biennale. So uh, exactly what I was saying is uh, is the the problem that um, is um, strongly related to the to the idea of a delay. Uh, the delay uh, in terms of the way how the work uh, happens to contextualize from the moment of the the innocent creation uh, really makes it all uh, be charged with meaning. Uh, that, that's probably why I, I have uh, I have now uh, um, took the courage to to use the Duchamp the, uh, the, the great glass uh, the big glass uh, image because it has its acceptance of the future to come from the position of an artist who uh, believed and this is his quote why 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 should we talk about painting Let, let's talk about delay so you have this delay. Uh, uh, that is an, an essential element of the critical approach of creating the, the perspective from the uh, side of the studio when I have a chance to look at the world, to look at the uh, all uh, actuality within a luxury of being late, of not being exactly on time. Uh, and this only gives me the, um, the, the opportunity to make the work being uh, charged more and more with the actual meaning, which I think still happens with the, with the work like Poit, because uh, it doesn't disappear. I think those roles of, uh, of offense um, um, are uh, more and more uh, um, surrounding us, and there are more and more of them. So the more it comes, uh, the, the longer the delay, the, 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 the stronger the work. Uh, with the Duchamp uh, uh, big glass, you have the acceptance of the accident. I think that kind of element is also essential for our approach to the work from the position of the delay as a critical um, uh, perspective uh, from the side of making work, but allowing ourselves to actually be late, uh, to be not necessarily on time because this is the only way I do believe as a painter to uh, to um, step out of this uh, regime of trying to be uh, current, trying to be uh, um, journalistic uh, in our approach or if our in our urge to to towards what's now, happening now in the time which is constantly, which is constantly speeding, speeding up, speeding up. And I think I think this is also something which deals with this idea of a shadow and a purgation, because uh, once we are able to uh, to step through this uh, 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 through this um, position of being in time in the actual, we are actually able to perceive our shadow. So we're stepping up into the moment of purgation because uh, the purgatory is the only place in Dante's uh, Divine Comedy when you can actually see the shadow. Uh, so as uh, the first shadow in Masaccio uh, 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 leaving the paradise. So is in the perception uh, that I find in incredibly, uh, incredibly inspirational 
because of my uh, number of my shows in Japan when I had the chance to witness uh, Bunraku theater, thinking that those um, uh, black clothes of the puppeteers are designed to camouflage them uh, within the background. In fact, it's the opposite. They are not the camouflage of the invisibility. They do not uh, attempt to make the uh, puppeteers invisible. They actually meant to make them symbolically invisible, to make them being visible as invisible. Uh, so, as in my work, uh, the projection is means to, to be the projection itself or represent the projection rather than just to project an image. Uh, so, uh, if you look at those puppeteers, the only ones who are not uh, who, uh, uh, forced to wear those black clothes are those ones whose faces can be totally indifferent. And I think there is this very true uh, uh, thing in terms of the, the distance between the, uh, the moment of conception and the moment of the actual giving out work is this moment of reaching the indifference towards your work. There are so many artists who are feeling urged to, uh, or who are so emotionally attached to their work that they uh, leave it out at the moment when they still, when they still, those connections are still existing. They're still emotionally related to what they do, to the, their struggle or the content or the meaning of the work. And I think this is the moment which I would compare in, 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 in those situations that happen to all of us in the airplanes. I mean, very often I happen to fly and when I'm flying, I'm urged to make a movie or film it, uh, film the video, make the video uh, of the, uh, like outside of the window or whatever. There are hundreds of films I made like that, and I, I use none of them. They're completely useless because uh, as long as I land, I reach this indifference towards this moment of uh, flying, and then the, the, um, the, the, the film becomes completely invaluable. Uh, so I would compare this this uh, stage, this liminal stage, to to the, the, this uh, uh, process of reaching indifference towards your work. As long as you're able to to reach it, then probably you're able to uh, get the right perspective towards what you actually uh, what you uh, what you've actually done. And I think this somehow expresses. The problem of an artist trying to illustrate uh, uh, to illustrate the reality around us and how he accommodates that uh, reality, political, social reality uh, within his own domain. So as Courbet did, uh, making this wonderful painting, uh, putting all the social classes and all structures into his studio, uh, where there's this tool of a, of a, a, a brush and a, and a bit bit of a of a of a smudgy a substance ha happens to be just the way how we negotiate our indifference or how we able to reach the indifference based uh, the indifference is being reached when we concentrate not on the on the on the political social uh, or whatever meaning of the whole uh, the, um, uh, stage which is in front of us but on the on the formal aspects and then probably we will be able to uh, to reach the the, the right uh, critical context so as i did with my students uh, setting up easels in front of the president palace uh, uh, when we had the demonstrations uh, before peace came to power and just painting those demonstration of the piece which was uh, was about to get into power. We were just watercolor painters. We were not uh, criticizing the situation from in from the direct point of view of uh, of uh, reportage. That's why I would say we did sort of a deportage, if I could say this, use this word, meaning that we are we are just uh, uh, creating a context of the innocence of an innocent artist who is able to actually uh, um, uh, uh, rely on the surface because uh, painters are related to the surface mostly. I'm a superficial uh, uh, person and I have the luxury to be superficial, to be superficial in terms of the way how I approach the, uh, the medium I work with, but also to be superficial in terms of the way how, how I see the reality, which is very 
much apropos what uh, Zimmel was saying before the, the fascism came to to um, the reality, uh, whether he was saying that that the the uh, analysis on the surface or looking at the surface is able to give us much more um, sense of the particular time and the place than the than the the deep uh, scientific analysis of it. So then I, I go to this, uh, another quote from Georgia Agamben, uh, painting is a suspension and the exposition of potentiality of this site, as much as the poetry is a suspension and, and the exposition of potentiality of a language. So this element of, uh, of, of the potentiality and is a suspension is very much inclined within my uh, approach towards the this moment between uh, making work uh, and reaching the in indifference which allows me finally to give it away but give it away um, uh, providing uh, the, the uh, this potentiality element to the actual spectator being able to uh, liberate myself from my uh, own attachment to the actual problem by the formal process of uh, waiting, as you could say, with the series of the stock of, of a gestation, in a way. So, as with the with the works that are somehow historically charged, which is uh, the projection which I used the uh, the crowd of the people uh, that gathered uh, in front of the Palace of Culture in 1966, uh, uh, I think it was. Uh, when uh, of 65 when Gomuka had this speech about the chance or, 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 or the easing up the communist rights and you had these crowds of people who created this projection uh, these are the uh, original archives that I have used but in fact the division between the two uh, uh, fitted exactly towards uh, what I would perceive now what Poland is uh, uh, which is totally politically split uh, in two in terms of its sentiments towards the, the, the present uh, government. And what is so there is a mirror, a mirror image which covered the, the tribune when the actual speech was made. And what you see is the, is the flow of the people to, who came to listen, to listen uh, within a hope for the future. But in fact, that, that, that past uh, archive element somehow re reflect, reflects very strongly, I would say, on the, on the actuality uh, of the situation in Poland at the moment. So this was 2016, which was 50th anniversary of this uh, uh, speech. So as the works that contextualize themselves in a, in a kind of paranoid way, I, I'm just uh, allow myself going within the thread of, uh, of, uh, of the, uh, the capital uh, of Poland. There is this, uh, this monument uh, created to commemorate the Smolensk catastrophe of the, of the plane. But because of the, uh, of the threat of the demonstration against it and against uh, Kaczynski, we had this uh, police crowd guarding the, the monument. But in fact, the monument is being created uh, by the context of these uh, uh, empowered uh, uh, surrounding, uh, uh, completely uh, um, unaware of that, that, that these are these guys um, dressed uh, to, to fight with the demonstrations. They, they in fact, they create the, the actual work. It's them who create the work, not the, the work itself. So as the, the crowd does. Of the crowd. 
This is Charles There's Bukowski. This is the Charles Bukowski uh, in the average poem. human being to supply any given army on any given day. And the best at murder are those who preach against it. And the best at hate are those who preach love. And the best at war, finally, are those who preach peace. Beware the average man, the average woman. Beware their love. Their love is average, seeks average. But there is genius in their hatred. There's enough genius in their hatred to kill you, to kill anybody. Not wanting solitude, not understanding solitude, they will attempt to destroy anything that differs from their own. Not being able to create art, they will not understand art. They will consider their failure as creators, only as a failure of the world. Not being able to love fully, they will believe your love incomplete. And then they will hate you. And their hatred will be perfect, like a shining diamond, like a knife, like a mountain, like a tiger, like hemlock, their finest art. And therefore, I do believe that every artist, in fact, is doomed to be an immigrant. Uh, because being an immigrant allows you to, to reach the overall uh, perspective towards what's uh, happening around you. Uh, unless you're not an immigrant, even if you're in your own country, you're not able to do it. And again, a work which is called um, the, the Leak in the Floor, uh, happens to actualize itself. It, it is a compilation of the war documentaries, uh, but we always see those documentaries in media is in a fragmented uh, way, uh, in a separated way. So that's why those media, uh, the, those uh, messages, in fact, become, uh, I would say, somehow um, permeable towards uh, any uh, sense of interaction from the uh, position of a viewer because they are they are fragmented. Uh, what I was trying to do here is to create the both. There's something which uh, uh, on, on the same the way uh, looks very innocent, almost like a toys, but in the same time creates an overall ex perspective of a war which we we are not able to see from such a way as we can see from the position of an immigrant, of somebody who is separating himself, using, in fact, the media that he's relating to, um, uh, that um, uh, uh, show us uh, the current situation. And I think within the current situation, this work again starts to contextualize itself, so so that's why it's not a it's not a, a, a big a, a mystery why I've decided to to show those that that work also today uh, at the moment of the war with Ukraine. Uh, I think this gives us somehow this leak in the floor that the way how we perceive that. It's also uh, the question how I deal with the pr proximity of an image, the way how uh, we are being very often fooled by the the tragedy of a perspective, the perspectival tra tragedy that uh, we are um, uh, put uh, at, the, at the moment by the information networks. Basically, um, the, I would I believe that that the, the the general problem is always optical, and I think that I always believe that the optics, in fact, uh, precedes ethics in some ways. So that's why, as long as we're not able to change the optics, then we're not able to change the ethics. Uh, this is another painting which I'm showing. It's been made in 2016, which was quite some time ago, and it's called the Putin Sty. And it's the original Putin style. 
recorded from his speeches. And it's an acrylic on canvas, one meter uh, 85 by one meter uh, 65 with the video projection. And I, making it, I wasn't really, uh, I was making the work. I was responding to my um, instant um, reflection about this guy, but uh, suddenly the work uh, the, is now deserving to be shown rather than uh, when it was uh, made. It was never shown before, in fact in a gallery. So again, we, 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 there's this question of the distance because the Algelast, I would say, it's not only a question of somebody who takes the truth or the reality from the position of yes or no, or expecting to the world to be illustrative, but it's also a question of the man who is not able to find the right uh, time or the or who is not able to believe that the reflection about the world or the way how we can laugh at the world uh, is always related also to the delay to the not only a spatial difference which we may assume that it's the reason why we laugh at things because they are not directly related to to us so it's a spatial difference that somehow the, uh, the defines our laughter but also um, uh, people who do not laugh, they do not perceive the, uh, the beauty of a delay, uh, the, the beauty of, uh, of uh, the time that we are able to distance ourselves uh, to the problem and hence uh, be able to laugh at the problem, uh, not only from the spatial position, but also from the, from the, uh, from the temporal position. Which very often is the, this is the this is the work of Krzysztof Wodiczko, who is one of the most important uh, uh, activist uh, artists using projection uh, at the moment. And I was always uh, incredibly impressed by his activity. But at the same time, I would say that uh, there are these parallel roads that we are going through, uh, but they overlap in a formal way, but they never overlap exactly in a way how he perceives the role of the artist uh, um, with the relation of to here and now. Not it's a beautiful work. It's beautiful, it's, uh, I would say, beauty, it, 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 like a, rather the tool than the, the, the aesthetical uh, description. I think it's a, it's it's a it's a beautiful way in the way how it it. it the beauty pays a certain type of function in his activity. But this activity is uh, the activity, I would say, much more of a designer and nothing, it's nothing where, uh, bad to say, it's nothing against his work, of course, because I, I highly appreciate this work. But what I'm saying here now is just to uh, stress out a little difference between two of us is that he is relating and that's what he's saying in also in his in his uh, uh, he the way how he describes the work is that uh, artists should actively take part within a discourse um, of here and now and try to change this here and now and this is this uh, this um, optimistic idealistic i would say approach that art can heal I, I, I'm not that really sure about that because I would say that I'm, from my own position, I do not believe I can heal anything. 
and also I do not believe that I'm not able to that I'm able to functionally change the reality. I still would find myself more in the position of of uh, area which is more of a cultural reflection rather than uh, the um, uh, design because I would consider design. Uh, as a part of the reality, which uh, again is very much related to the um, actuality. So uh, maybe this aspect of actuality, um, although I do believe that my work can make a very strong standpoint in terms of being actual, but uh, the actuality is not directly in, 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 in directly in, in present within my within my work. That's why I've shown this uh, piece. Closer to another one, which maybe describes more of a, my idea of abstracting the image. And then when the image is abstracted, then it can, it can contextualize itself depending on which wall it hangs. So this painting hangs in a certain wall in a certain such and place, and then it contextualizes itself not by its own means, but that by the environment that it exists. Although it just represents the poli police dog training. Uh, uh, dog is invisible. The figure who is a trainer is invisible. So is visible. So maybe that's the difference that uh, I'm not exactly showing the source of the of the animation, uh, unlike Vodichko, I'm I'm just showing the effect, which is much more abstract, and it's much more uh, uh, less individual, less personal that that his works are. So he plays a really important role in the discourse of uh, providing a stage for uh, people who rework their own traumas and their own uh, positions, but uh, so they are able to be heard. So if I would find him. As a, as a perfect stage designer, I would make my work, uh, although the stage is necessarily, but I would say that the stage is more of an offer of the um, count uh, of the uh, interaction with the viewer in a more direct way, rather than providing a space for the participant to take an active part in it. This is Goya, the the uh, courtyard of lunatics, uh, incredibly important uh, painting. Also because of this uh, this luminous aspect uh, existing within a, a question of looking at what kind of ab abs absurd activity we can get involved with uh, as an artist. Uh, And how differently we can be judged, or, and and we are being judged on the, on the, or only on the on the uh, basis of the time and the space. Like in this work, which is called Yolovi, this is also a reference to Goya. When I have the viewer, which is me in this uh, image, uh, who is delayed actively uh, and the projection in fact is able to maybe perceive what is the sentence. Another reference to another painter, Kaspar David Friedrich, who painted this wonderful painting called The Monk. And again, uh, image uh, which lures us within this uh, idea of a human figure who is not a human figure, it's just uh, this uh, costume, uh, which is very much sort of an anti um, uh, image, which uh, is uh, the anti pandemic uh, costume and the only, only, uh, only a uh, source which animates this figure in front of the landscape is the air. Again, a painting which was made a couple years ago, uh, I'm just showing this to uh, maybe visualize my uh, surprise how some of these images that came out completely came to life completely out of a context happened to be 
very direct and very um, commentary about the current reality, although there was no intention of them. Like there is no intention in, in, uh, in Artur Nacht Samborski, uh, artist who was active in uh, late 50s, uh, in, in, not in, in the 50s uh, during the Stalinist era in Warsaw, painting flowers. And he happened to be political and he was banned from the Academy of Fine Arts in, in Warsaw because he was painted, he, was, he, wasn't, uh, he didn't intend to, uh, to make such, uh, such realist paintings uh, of the workers, he just wanted to paint flowers. So for me, uh, he, this happened to be a very powerful statement uh, and the statement was just uh, um, a statement of somebody who in fact is again, uh, uh, starting from the Kiesler, is, is resisting. Uh, so th that type of resistance happened to be political at the times when um, you were forced to uh, be painter only on the conditions of uh, of painting certain type of imaginary. So as Emil Nolde, uh, who was very pro uh, Nazi at the moment, at the the, the, the beginning of the of the uh, Third Reich, and he was really keen to be al allied with, with the with the Nazi. Uh, uh, he was a symp sympathetic towards that ideology. But in fact, his painting, on the one hand, happened to be again something with this kind of powerful, colorful uh, tone, something which was described as Entarte Kunst, and it was banned. So his work was contextualized uh, by the politics uh, against his will. And the last of the inspirations, which is Luke Toymans and the, the gas chamber, again, trying to look forward and be actual on the basis of using a, a medium which is already outdated and already sort of almost like a found arti arti artifact, who would be predicting the future, which is already gone. So this kind of a double loop here, uh, I found incre incredibly interesting also from the way how historically we are related to the uh, um, certain signifiers uh, of the of the moment, which are um, somehow uh, very strongly related to how we do perceive ourselves in the in the in this temporal sphere, which is now, and the question of the future. Uh, which is in this fantastic uh, Felix uh, Gonzalez Torres uh, banner is just a matter of time. So it's just a matter of time how we do it and it's just a matter of time how we meet also. And to be just to close to be close to my uh, to my presentation, this is the one of the works which I have uh, done with the wonderful performer Maria Colugi from Argentina. And again, we met and we did not question uh, context. We did not question the content. We did what we did. I was painting, she was performing. And then uh, we did not even um, discuss. We discussed all sorts of things, but we did not discuss the formal side of the work. The work just overlapped within her performance and my uh, and my paintings, providing her very uh, untypical stage, maybe the only stage uh, at that time because uh, the the work were, was made uh, uh, about uh, two years ago when the pandemic started and she didn't really have a, sp a place to perform and I uh, had only my studio. And this meeting, for me, it's, it's a kind of also uh, incredible uh, example of a meeting of the two artists who somehow uh, agree upon uh, this uh, situation without trying to make something together, but trying to make something parallel. So this is a little bit like with this Bunraku theater. We have the puppeteers and they are responsible for legs and for hands. And there is a struggle, and uh, the, the, thanks to that, they do accept themselves. But in fact, they are responsible for different 
ways of expressions, this something phenomenal happens that none of them could really predict because she didn't design or she didn't ask me to make paintings in a specific way to let her perform. I did not ask her to perform in a way that would fit into the, uh, the particular stage that I have created. Uh, and again, the work will, uh, within <clears throat> this highly abstract level of performing and painting, the, the, the work uh, becomes a mystery in itself. And that's what I love about this, because I'm not able to say anything about this work more, except uh, what I just see, and I see exactly what you see. Maybe this is also this aspect of um, finding myself very much on the surface of an image and uh, creating this um, or the belief that uh, it's not the question of uh, of providing or uh, making the contact or um, easier uh, or submersing sub uh, within the world which is so submersive now uh, that allowing allowing the viewer to get inside of the image is not uh, it's not necessarily the best way uh, i would always think that i'd rather um make viewer to stay outside of an image not being able to access the image in a full way that's why i probably never use a sound in my works because they are immersive they they provide a set type of comfort of being inside of an image or the situation i think again this is this question of a of a distance or or the the uh, the the permeability of the of the image when the viewer is not able to fully access the uh, the work and that's why maybe uh, paradoxically he becomes uh, more involved within the work rather than in a situation if 
we would deal with um, uh, this black cinema box, uh, what Mario mentioned at the beginning. Uh, it's more about being aware and being present in front of the work rather than uh, being inside of it. That's why all these works are really presented in the in the daylight conditions. So the viewer, in fact, is very much aware of his presence uh, and his own time passing by uh, in front of the in front of the work. Sorry, went too far. So this is a this is a picture from Museum of Butterflies I uh, I made in New York ages ago, but I think it's really a good comment for the end of my speech, which means the necessity to resist the uh, the, the the being on time and and uh, the necessity to resist from the artist's point of view. Uh, of this uh, process of purgation, which I would say is, is necessary for any work of art to be independent and to be something more than just uh, um, uh, another bite, uh, another uh, um, uh, 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 graphomaniac uh, uh, fragment of the of the of the reality. Uh, so as long as we keep the butterflies flying, flying uh, in our uh, area in our and area allow and them allow to fly within the time, time, time that uh, may not necessarily be so intact, then in fact there is a chance to create a work which will affect. Um, uh, in long uh, term uh, of being contextualized anyway by the actuality of the times that we live in, which is a very much like these barriers of uh, uh, of the crowd against the crowd demonstrations, which I pushed in a gallery uh, and it affected uh, the domino effect. Uh, <laughs> which I would say is much more powerful as a consequence as the work which would be straight from the beginning designed to be perceived exactly as I intended. And this is the end of my speech. Thank you so much for your patience. I think we need like we need like one hour meditation. Meditation before speaking. There is some echo there. Is it me? Uh, no, I mean I can hear you perfectly well. I don't know.
Uh, who wants to say something? I, I, I took some notes. But uh, Abril, you want to say something before me? Well, I am delighted with this presentation uh, because uh, Ledgeman uh, gave us uh, uh, an example uh, of uh, what uh, really um, genetic art can be. Uh, I say this because uh, the, his work is a meditation on, on creation, I think. Uh, it, it's uh, it, it's uh, uh, when, when he says that it, it is necessary to, to have some distance, to, to have some uh, time, it is, the, it is the time to, to the work to grow. Uh, and and it seems that the the, the work of art is a, is is a, a living being being because it has to 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 make his own uh, his own um, progression it's it's on life and I, I think I I am very much. Uh, pleased with this presentation. I took some notes too. Uh, I would like to, to write about it because it, it, it is uh, uh, too many things to, to say uh, to say in uh, in uh, uh, how to say in the art reactive uh, uh, way. Uh, and uh, another point that I, I would like to say it, it is the that uh, distance the Ledgeman talks about, I, I saw it, uh, I understood it as a, a, a way to, to, to try to, to get free from conditionalism, to, to be conditionalized by, 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 by the, 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 the things that we call reality. And uh, uh, reality uh, is much more than the things we call reality, I think. And uh, uh, this is all uh, meditation stuff, I think. I stop here. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you Ledgeman. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you want to say something, Hermanilda? Or shall I say certain me myself? Yeah, maybe. I, I, I'm still thinking. Yeah, more. me too. <laughs> so, so my, my so, English is not so perfect. Then may I say Dominic, because I'm living here in Amsterdam and we all call each other by the first name. Absolutely. And I'm, yeah, is no, that okay? There's no other way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay. So it's like, it was a really a lot and um, very full and yeah. And I, I'm very happy that I was invited. I could listen to it and I see it is recorded. So with my lack of English, I maybe can also hear it another time <laughs> because I think that you talked about a lot of really crucial things uh, which make art to art. So I was also I I like very much your um, what how you say this is design or not design. And I live here in Holland. I think I don't know. You have been exhibiting here. I have I've missed it, but um, um, I don't know how much you know about like Dutch art. And I always hear as a German artist, it's actually I tell the people here when they get aggressive against me because I'm German. I always tell them that I'm a quarter Polish because I have a Polish grandma. <laughs> okay. Half, yeah, and um, so I make a joke about it. I think Dominic understands what's about the joke. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I always I I see that people are always they want to know before what they create, and they design it perfectly and so on and so on. I'm always bored. There are so little artists then who manage to do something totally in pur pur purpose, which is still then alive. That is a really big art. Not many. There are some people who manage, but not very much. And for myself, it's always, I always don't want to bore myself. So I always, I start with something and then it happens. And what I see with you that you to told about the delay that very often the, the context of a work is coming later. And Absolutely. I often, I, I, I didn't have so much opportunities to show work, but I very often saw like exhibitions who were about things I was, I had in drawings or whatever before, but nobody knew about it. And then later it would be would have 
been fitting very well, you know. And I think that is a very interesting uh, approach also that many artists only try to be at the moment and want to be, but that is not how it's working. It is some, it, you know, your mind should be much broader and not focusing of being something in a certain time to, to like also kind of, it's a kind of, um, it's more about your ego then that you want to be somebody, somebody in the time and to be important. Yes. Then it's about the interests which you yes. meet within your life, why you are reacting in a certain way and picking something. Why you, uh, um, uh, Jose said um, that it's meditating. You are thinking about you see your wife pregnant or you see something else. And it's just interesting. So you you pick it. And it's full of all your like, just um, just like um, experiencing it, and experiencing is always also questioning it, and so you just do it like innocent, and then later it it um, it explores its full uh, power just because you didn't had the intention to make it to something. Yeah. Absolutely. That is, that is that is so that is that you you pointed that very well in your speech. I'm really impressed about how you did it for two hours time, <laughs> sticking to this point and making it deeper and deeper. And I think it's 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 very it's a very basic thing, which is um, yeah not so much um, in in the spotlights today. Yeah? It's and I think that is that is really. It's it cannot be, oh. it cannot be, because we 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 dealing with a system which is based on a certain type of recognition, which is based on, on demand. Yeah. We call demand. 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 demand is like, yeah. You have, you have a gallery demand, you have a museum demand, you have a whatever demand, and as long as demand is at stake, you become a cultural designer. Yeah. There's not wrong with being a cultural designer, but let's name it. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a good title for it. And it's also that in the way that you are, you're, you're actually you're not up to date because then you, you are already too late because of course, <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, because the things you took, you took them in, you took it before and then it fitted later. But in the moment you want to be in the moment and pick yeah. the thing which is in the moment just the discussion point, then you never get it. Yeah. yeah absolutely. I guess yeah. that's where the, the idea of gestation is there. Yeah. So the artist becomes a sort of real an energy of generation or gestation. Let it. Yeah. Uh, I took a couple notes. Um, I, 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 I was there. <laughs> I, oh, if you want to continue. But no, no, no. I just there. want to say thank you to uh, Dominic. Dominic it's really welcome. Participated in a show. Last, I mean, in Portugal, not long ago, um, in the Museum of Lisbon, and well, the the work was done, etc. But outside, he looked at some barriers. He looked at some barriers, if you remember, Dominic, and he said to me, "Mario, can you hold my phone? Take this picture here." You had no idea this work would be two years later, in 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 Venice. You see. He, he just felt a few barriers in the, that sequence. Mm -hmm. There was something happening there. So a sense, I would say this is a sort of new, I don't want to name it because I come from literature and design. Precisely, I came out of, I'm a designer, by the way. I'm also, maybe I managed to talk to Dominic because I also see things in black, in, in, in B-dimensional because I was a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. I got a bit bored when I started to to have to do beautiful uh, covers for books that did not make sense. <laughs> no, really. And I said, no, fuck, I'm going to write the books. <laughs> yeah. And I have even my little manias. I like the books with, you know. So then I understood how, when we speak about the public sphere, this is the game of words really serious here. Changing one single name, which is public sphere, which is this Habermasian, and, and even to ultimately aren't very well intentioned people, but it's still in the in the reasoning of image appearing and demonstration and and this and that, you know, uh, with flags and you know, no, we are already asking for as 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 brilliantly Abreu did a, a public sphere. 
something way more universal, way more round. If you, I don't know, I'm not a painter, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, it, we manage now to to we are doing it in with this project a sort of cartography of an emergent sensibility towards the way we see art. Mm -hmm. Now it's curious that. Um, really this idea of optics that 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 Dominique spoke about wow it's really is it so I said in the beginning of the talk image no it's optics it's even more diagrammatical almost so in the end the work of Dominique in my opinion but there you go I come from literature because I studied German literature after the design because I studied Kafka Schiller Novalis Goethe you know the beautiful minds that try to do a different philosophy of life with romanticism. Come on, who won? It was Newton who won, not Goethe. You see, the theory of colors of, 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 of Goethe is not yet translated into English. Mm. Can you can imagine this. So, I mean, the alternative vision of color is not available for the public yet, you see? So I think we're doing here really a nice, uh, you know, revolutionary, if you want, or very simple we are we are you know saving our souls whatever but <laughs> so um a couple points it's beautiful how this idea of kairos the moment which is very beautiful in our lives a right moment for anything is beautiful but dominic puts this in question concerning the role of art very, very beautiful so we need art not exactly of the kairos but maybe who conveys the kairos of the perception of the viewer. The mm -hmm. viewer dives into the moment. Uh, that's why the lights never go down. I remember with Dominic, we were in Poland, uh, very trying to, you know, Dominic comes today, let's put the, prepare everything, the tower, the projects, and et cetera. And the director of the festival, I was just the curator, to be nice to Dominic, put down the lights of the city in that area, in that part of the city. So that people could see the image. And then Dominique arrives in very mad. No, I want the lights of, of the city there. My image is going, oh, sorry. You see? So <laughs> it's a new, it's a paradigm that uh, is at stake here. And yeah, so a uh, beautiful idea of the value. So I come a lot from rhetorics. I studied a lot Aristotle. And, and for me, there is this tension between who says how things are like Plato and a guy like Aristotle, who is much more ready to, let's have a talk about things. Let's have a talk. And what Aristotle did is to ex explain why uh, or how talks are held. Do you agree with me? Aristotle is a philosopher as well. But for me, people crucify him as a philosopher, and I don't really care. But as a rhetorician, and, the, and he also wrote poetics, right? These two books explain a lot what happened here today. It's very important for the viewer, in this case of Aristotle, the reader, to get, to grasp the functioning, the device that, that was happening there. You know, that's why Dominique quoted uh, Agamben in that point. Um, but of course, then there is these beautiful things only a specific mind can give. And I think the key word here is really innocence. So each one of us has a role in this life or a mission, according to Jung and a few others. So I think. Dominic is the example of an artist who took his mission, I don't even say seriously, because he laughs a lot about it. <laughs> and me too. But he lives it, and he, he, he turned his artworks. Um, it's very interesting. It's not a genealogy. This is very strange. Usually we read, the, when we are kids, we read the art book saying, this artist came first, and then the next one, remember? And that, oh... Picasso took the, the, the brush from that one and maybe Cezanne invented, you know, this is really not exactly what happened. What happened is when artists really managed to convey something of their perception and, and their mechanisms and then entangle that. And, and I, what I think is that uh, Dominic did, does this for forever. It's very strange. You know, there is not a... And yet each work adds a layer of this reading. So, so each work, uh, especially this work with the marionette, these works are really like 
you can stay hours speaking of, about them. It's very strange, you know. We can go into Kleist, for instance, in the marionette. But, you know, uh, I don't know if I'm making too much sense anyway. Okay, so, and uh, just to uh, took a few notes, so one more thing. This idea of relation with the future and the now, very important. We live in a, in a society that put us in a sort of eternal present. Mm. That is a, that, that, that's not even happening. That's it. So uh, one of the works I particularly like is his work in front of the big building in Poland. Because uh, the artist managed to make something that already happened long before, <laughs> technically, with found footage. Yeah, and suddenly it's, it's not even <laughs> present. It's already the future, you see. So this is kind of art that traverses time. And I finish with this idea. Paradoxically, Dominic Lem is frequently considered a time-based painter, right? He does time-based paintings. But um, maybe he just makes spatial optics. <laughs> I don't know. Because with his work, we keep inventing words. It's very stimulating. Every time, the time I, I wrote about Dominic took me many weeks and I, I told him, sorry, I cannot write this less than 40 pages. I just <laughs> couldn't. Uh, you know, that's also what uh, Jose did, uh, already said. You know, we, we need to go home and, and this is things that demand, it's not simple visual, uh, you know, uh, everyday art. What was the name we were talking some time ago uh, of this art design? It was a beautiful definition you gave. Uh, we forgot already, but we will. We have the recording. You mean the, the, the cultural design? As yes, well. absolutely. This is so honest and this is really transparent. So, yeah, good. Not used this art. Goes, this goes back. This goes back to the to the, 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 the those uh, issues of laughter. Because you you cannot, I would say you cannot laugh uh, at something that you make on demand. <laughs> <laughs> There's no laughter for the oh, but the Americans have these recorded laughters. Yeah, remember in the, in the la recorded laughter. You know, <laughs> horrible. Okay, really America recorded laughter. <laughs> <laughs> It is, it is. Uh, well, I just invite everybody. Can I say, Dominic, that you will be in Venice soon? Yes, guys. It's yes, already yes. public. You're, you're very much invited. I'm very happy. There'll be a lot of laugh, I hope, and other things. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, Hermenilde, come join us in Venice on the 23rd of April. Oh, uh, I Dominic, don't understand uh, that. <laughs> okay. But Dominic I, will have 10 installations in the Isola, or Isola di San Servolo, the former um, mm -hmm. asylum. It's today at the Museum of Madness. And 10 works, different scales, outside, inside. It's really an experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a statement because it's in front of the Biennale. It's not part of the Biennale. Oh, yeah. But of course, art is also a community. I know a friend of mine from Zimbabwe, and I said, oh, you are here to the Biennale? She said, yes, because art is also mine it's not only from them so we are kind of playing with this idea that it's a beautiful stage as as dominic already do, do mentioned this very complicated word called stage mm -hmm. uh, but we are there we're not only staging we are really there so it's the welcome. scene it's the scene because i think i think this is also an interesting point uh, that i haven't maybe developed that much that that we we live in i do believe we live in the obscene world <laughs> So the, the sense of a scene is really important. Uh, the contemporary visual culture is obscene because it denies the presence of the scene. I mean, I use paintings, I use, I lit, uh, visualize, make the, 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 not only the projection, but the space being present, which is also like in this, uh, in this idea of a cinema with the, with the lights on, because there is this moment in the end of the uh, spectacle when you have the uh, the movie is still going and the lights are on and we we know the movie so we don't have to watch it in the full darkness but at least when the lights are on we can see each other 
So th this is this kind of respect towards the viewer uh, by presenting not only the protagonist or not only the art, the the uh, the actor or performer, but also the scene as an important part of the play. I think is really crucial. But we we tend to forget that there is such thing like a scene, uh, and that's why I think what's around us is really obscene <laughs> because it lacks the scene. <laughs> And you look like a Caravaggio in your scene right now. The image of you. <laughs> it's getting darker. Thank you very much. Well, you're very much welcome. It was a pleasure. It's a, always a fantastic pleasure. And, and it takes, to me personally, my mind always on the move. And uh, I don't know. That's it. We, are going to, we have recorded this. We will have this available in a book soon. So this is our job for the day <laughs> okay. the day is over the day is over <laughs> yes okay. thank you very much bye bye thank you uh, see you soon